Hello again, I am Blonty, and this, hopefully, obviously, is Cyberpunk 2077. And it's about to get a big new feature, a feature so incredible that um, a literal single figure fraction of the install base will be able to even turn it on, much less enjoy it to its full potential or even play the game with it turned on, but it's very interesting all the same. I suspect pretty much everyone who will find their way to this video will know what I'm talking about already. It's path tracing and it's making its way to us within days of when this video will go live but it's not just path tracing it's path tracing and dlss 3.0 whose cheats tricks and sleight of hand technological frame fakery will be kind of essential to even having path tracing work at all or at least anything close to playable frame rates NVIDIA and CD Projekt Red have both been previewing the incoming so-called overdrive mode graphics option for Cyberpunk 2077 for a little while now, including a brand new video just put up by CD Projekt Red running through the settings themselves. And in basic terms, its function is to largely replace the game's already unusually extensive and expensive ray tracing effects with full path tracing. So... What is the actual difference between ray tracing and path tracing? Because I know what you're thinking to yourself. Doesn't ray tracing trace the paths of the rays? What What's path tracing if it's not ray tracing? Well, here it is. That question is kind of like answering what is the difference between fresh squeezed apple juice and a glass of something that tastes a lot like apple juice. It even has some apple juice in it, but is legally required by the National Food Authority to be branded apple drink because there's not enough juice in there for it to be called juice, legally speaking. You get what I'm coming at? See, for all its cleverness and effectiveness and vast superiority uh, over older video game lighting techniques, ray tracing is still kind of a cheat. It's a shortcut. While path tracing is in itself by definition a type of ray tracing, it uses the same ideas, the same technological execution. It is, however, just more advanced. It's more... It's just like there's technically some real apple juice in that apple drink. It is just a percentage. It's like 5% real apple juice in the apple drink, while the fresh squeezed apple juice is 100% pure apple juice, squeezed from apples and nothing but apples. Path tracing bounces its, you know, imaginary light rays across the video game scene in its entirety using all local and global light sources. So every little point of light, every little neon light, every car headlight, every little torch light, every little blinking light, and the sun, and the moon, and whatever else is around, and the street lights over there, it uses all of them. It isn't just limited to producing specific kinds of shadows or reflections generated from specific pre-chosen light sources in uh, in the game, in the in the scene, or specific surfaces with particular reflectivity settings. That's how regular ray tracing usually works in this game. It's, it's not everything. It's a few carefully chosen ones to bring across the effect of, of you know, believable lighting, of, of lighting that behaves in the way you would expect lighting to behave. But it is done in a little bit of a cheaty way. And ray tracing is usually used in combination with other cheaper lighting techniques, the older stuff we always used to use in video games, and it's kind of a soft estimation of the tracing bit with a lot of error correction going on and other tricks to make it practical to use in the first place. You might have seen this. If, if you stop and look, you might see a kind of shimmering sometimes in certain light sources or reflections or shadows shifting or flickering just a little bit. Um, you usually only notice them when you stop and look for it, and even then you have to know what you're looking for to see it. But it is there, and that's what this is. That's that's some of the error correction and other sort of artifacting going on because, because ray tracing as we know it now does kind of cheat a little bit just to make it practical to use on the hardware that we have. But path tracing does the whole job and in a much more complete way, using more accurate tracing, using all the lights in the scene and around the scene, using multiple bounces. So light will come from a light and bounce off the car hood and then onto a window and then off the window onto the ground. And it tracks all of that. So the light behaves even more closely and even more accurately to how light behaves in the real world. Basically, it's the type of lighting generation techniques that movie studios use for full-on 3D films and effect shots and stuff these days. Except, we're trying to do it in real time. 
and at hopefully more than 30 times every single second. And in a situation where the player could look in any direction at any time, at any speed, so you can't even make that many predictions about what's happening next and get sort of prepared for it. So, yeah, don't underestimate what kind of monstrous, and I mean monstrous, feat of brute force computation that this needs to actually work. That's why NVIDIA want to show it off. They're really proud of making this even work in the first place, even if it's not quite practical yet. This is a forward-looking thing. You know, a generation or two of video cards down the road are going to have a much easier time of this, and it's going to be in a lot more games. This is this is the first baby steps. This is the first this is the first practical step of putting it in something real so we can see it in action. But Cyberpunk isn't even the first game with this in it, by the way. Uh, the, the marketing around it might lead you to think it's a breakthrough premiere feature first seen in Cyberpunk 2077, but um, Portal with RTX does this kind of path tracing, for example, already. Uh, Minecraft RTX does it. There's even mods for the likes of Quake 2 and Half-Life that do this kind of path tracing. Have you tried Portal with RTX, by the way? Because I have, um, and it, it runs like garbage, even on a 3080 Ti. <laughs> And frankly, uh, a more realistic look in Portal's lighting kind of takes away from the wonderful aesthetic that game had anyway. It's an interesting tech demo, don't get me wrong, but when I want to play Portal, I'll stick to playing the OG version of the game's presentation. Thank you very much. I like that better. <laughs> Plus, the game runs smooth. But Cyberpunk 2077 will be a showpiece for this technology because Portal, Minecraft, Quake and Half-Life certainly don't have worlds as large, as rich, as detailed, as complicated or as saturated with light sources and reflectivity surfaces like Cyberpunk does. It will also, for the time being, as we've been talking about, be almost impossible for 99% of gamers to even run it at all, never mind run it at speeds to make it worth it while trying to actually play the game. There's a reason NVIDIA's preview shots are all using an absolute top-end, virtually unobtainably priced GPU in the RTX 4090. A hideous goblin of a monster of a GPU. Because even it, even the 4090 running overdrive mode at 84K lurches out this game in as little as 16 FPS. And that's where DLSS 3.0 comes in. Using NVIDIA's advanced deep learning super sampling upscaling sorcery, which I'm still in awe of amazingly how well it works and how very nearly seamless it is in operation when you're just playing a game. You really only notice if you, if you go looking for it, if you go pixel peeping it and know exactly what kind of artifacts you're looking for in the first place. To the average gamer, it's just basically seamless magic. But even that is not enough for overdrive mode. You will still also need to slam that together with DLSS 3.0's new trick, the um, controversial AI frame generation. See, while DLSS upscaling makes up new pixels using AI trickery to, you know, make pretend a 1080p frame is a 4K frame, DLSS 3.0 frame generation uses similar AI to fake an entirely new frame to insert between the real rendered frames to fake having a higher frame rate and more smoothness. This technique does, however, as you might imagine, introduce more latency because it has to generate that frame in the first place. That takes work. And NVIDIA combat that latency with yet another one of their technologies, NVIDIA Reflex. Now, Reflex, thankfully, has no downsides of its own, except it does have to be specifically built into a game by the developer, so you can't just use it on any game you like. And I personally haven't done much sort of A-B testing with Reflex. I have tried it in a couple of things, and it does seem to work like it's intended, more or less. So it'll be interesting to see if we can use Cyberpunk and Overdrive mode to really get to grind with just how much of a difference Reflex can make when it's really under the gun. So... If you've got an RTX 40 series card, which is currently the only hardware that supports the DLSS 3.0 technology at play here, you might stand a chance of running overdrive mode at a severely compromised frame rate. The developers themselves claimed in an overview video they just published that it could be as much as a 40% hit to your normal frame rate. That's huge! Almost halving your frame rate, for crying out loud. I'm not sure how many games will actually be playing Cyberpunk 2077 in full in any practical sense with Overdrive turned on right now. The number of people who own cards even capable of turning it on in the first place are in the single digit fractions, according to Steam's latest hardware survey. However, the newest RTX 40 series card is just about to land, the RTX 4070. 
And it remains to be seen if that more reasonably priced and comparatively modest card is even powerful enough at all to do this trick at even something like, like 1080p, with DLSS 3.0 upscaling it internally from 720p. And still keep a playable frame rate if you turn on overdrive mode. That's to say nothing of the as yet to arrive RTX 4060, but of course the XX60 series of Nvidia's lineups always being by far, and I mean by far, the most popular choice and the most heavily adopted. It's going to be interesting to watch when this lands and over the next uh, several months as the 4070 and 4060 uh, start landing on shelves and whatnot. Overdrive mode will be patched into Cyberpunk 2077 on April the 11th. Personally, that's not the date I'm interested in. I'm waiting on getting a date for the supposedly huge DLC expansion, The Phantom Liberty. Once we get that, I'll be doing my third full playthrough of the game, and then running right into Phantom Liberty with a nice refreshed set of muscle memory for the controls, mechanics, and kick the rust off my skill set for this game. I'm looking forward to it. I, however, have a mere, a meager, a humble RTX 3080 Ti. <laughs> which, despite being a monster in its own right, still to this day, literally cannot even utilize DLSS 3.0 at all. NVIDIA don't let it do that for um, reasons. I wonder if I can even turn on overdrive mode without it, though. Even if I just want to use it for screenshots, you know, even if it's just like five frames a second, just, just enough to get a good looking screenshot or something out of it. I wonder. Won't be long till we find out, I guess. Until then, thank you very much for watching. I am Blunty. Thank you as always to the patrons scrolling up above there, whose above and beyond support is um, overdrive. Thank I, my thanks is my my appreciation is overdrive mode. There's there's something there. You guys work on it.